This project is important because it develops in an area that was very damaged because of the excessive use, an area for planting eucalyptus. So the monoculture that we have here in this region that is very uh, predominant it is lack of the government uh, to manage the territory. So each one of the, that is private ownership, they have only looked to the landscape as their financial interest, the monetization of the, the landscape. Of course, it helped in the past because people just uh, get many families out of poverty that they were very poor. In this case, the eucalyptus came as a, a pointer to help them get out of poverty. But now at the time, in the last years, is not the reason because uh, they have access to this land and they are still uh, monetizing the, the landscape and the soil. So actually they should consider at least to broaden the use of the soil with other species that actually can be very productive. We need to create uh, landscapes for humans to have products to consume. This is not a plantation that we take and, and, and pick something to eat. A human being cannot eat this, uh, you know, nothing from the eucalyptus. Uh, okay, you can do some, some products, natural products, uh, but not, not to eat. This is an ecological restoration project, which means that we try to establish a natural cover that is as similar as possible to the one that existed before humans came and destroyed that <laughs> what existed before. Yeah, the project at the moment has a potential to, to make intervention on uh, 155 hectares. This was uh, a land that was already been uh, planted with eucalyptus and had lots of mimosa trees. So it was uh, heavy, heavily invaded with the mimosa trees. The project uh, in the beginning was removing the, the eucalyptus, cutting all the eucalyptus and cutting all the mimosas. Second phase, planting, uh, giving more density to the native trees uh, and um, recovering the, the already existing trees. In spite of the fact that uh, more than 15 years passed since the beginning of the intervention, and in spite of the fact that we already have a very interesting uh, tree cover in this place, we still have a lot to do here. We, we, we continue to, to need uh, the need to control the brambles and we still have uh, invasive species to, to, to remove. So this is a work that may continue for, for, for decades <laughs> uh, to be succeeded. So it's really important, the work that we do to change the monoculture, in this case, the eucalyptus monoculture, into native forest again. Because monocultures will have many, many different impacts on the soil, on the, on the water that comes to, to our rivers, on the biodiversity that we have, and on many other different levels. So it's quite clear when you enter the eucalyptus forest and then you go to a native forest, the, the differences in the biodiversity level. And not just the, the biodiversity that you have to study to know, but you can just close your eyes and you will listen to the sounds. And in, in one of them, in the eucalyptus forest, you will not hear many sounds. You may hear maybe flies, you can hear one or two birds in the distance and the wind and the sound of the trees. But when you go to the native forest, you will hear so many birds and so many insects. And when you open your eyes, you will see so many different colors and so many different plants and, and so much life that when you are in monoculture, and this is about any monoculture, you will see just the same thing over and over and over. And it's quite clear to me personally and to us what the difference is and what the most healthy option is. So the connection between having some scientific agriculture parts and some other reforestation parts is that, uh, so we are looking at the context of this forest in uh, a whole. So you can have the reconversion from the eucalyptus plant, you plant native species, but with the syntropic agriculture methods, you are creating other areas. So for example, we have one part that is full of nests and it's planted a lot of plants together that will give a food forest. And what is a food forest? 
is essentially, yeah, you have many different plants that will offer many different types of food, not just for humans, but also for animals. And so, so you are like kind of feeding the wildlife, not directly, not giving them like, oh, here's your meal, but you are making it so the plants around them are capable of uh, also giving this to them. So you are increasing biodiversity like that and also making something nice for humans. Um, because the view of Scientropy is really seeing the human not as an external being, but as another animal in the ecosystem. So we are also one of the animals who will benefit from the food forest. And the Scientropy Garden is uh, different because it's not so much inside of the forest, but the Scientropic Garden is actually... There's been some science um, research that shows that small gardens are really good for biodiversity. Sometimes they can have more biodiversity than just a native forest. Uh, why? Well, of course, it's concentrated. So you, since you have a lot of uh, fruits and you have a lot of flowers, you have a lot of insects and pollinators. And behind the insects and the pollinators will come the little lizards and the little frogs. And behind those will come the birds that eat them. And so, and so it will be quite concentrated because there is an abundance of food for everything. So I guess, we, even with using the Scientropy techniques, it's really focusing on this abundance and that you can create some hotspots where every being can eat. So yeah, that's the, the explanation of why we, besides doing the reforesting, we also do this creation of abundance and creation of food. So we, we try to connect young people to, to this project in several ways because we, we trust education related to forest is really important. Uh, it's a bit an aspect that has been lost in Portugal. So we trust a lot we will regain interest of the next generation by education. The ways we are doing, first with local school, through some educational activity, or in school, or taking the, the children here in the forest and doing some reforest activity. We also work uh, with some scouts, but also was in interest to, to have more long-term person. And so that's why we choose to open uh, some European project through the European Solidarity Corps to learn and to, to spread the knowledge and the, co the consciousness once back in their own project, in their own life. And uh, I think we, we reached the point. This project is important because it focuses on the value of nature for itself and doesn't really serve a, a productive purpose. And on top of that, it's included in a long-term perspective of biodiversity conservation and reforestation that goes beyond small scale and individual scale. What I like about volunteering is that it provides opportunity to meet people from different nationalities and also to be in this kind of environment where local people are involved in things that matter and do this kind of work for nature. I applied for this project because I was feeling the need to work in nature and with my previous job I was feeling that I, was, I wasn't doing something meaningful or without a purpose or with the same values as mine. So voluntary work is very good for myself because it kind of empowers me. When I was back at home or I just have my job, which I do for an income, it has not a deeper purpose for me, like I don't want to do that because I think the cause is good I'm just doing it for the income and when I do voluntary work I choose something that I think is important that has an impact that other people believe is important and it gives back power to you um, so I recommend it to everyone. I applied for this project because I was looking for informal ways of learning about ecology and, and management of nature and helping biodiversity. Uh, first I studied sociology and then environmental sciences, but I struggled to find a job uh, that, that interests me and that I was suitable for. 
So that's why I, I chose to go for more informal learning and this project offered me that. I think volunteering is something that can bring people, especially young people, a lot of experiences like discovering new places, meeting new people, having interesting conversations with, with different perspectives and stuff. Um, and, and to stay longer in certain places that maybe otherwise you would have not gone to or only quickly. Um, and to also discover alternative ways of working and being and yeah. Just a good way of discover. So Eco Valley Feridoro is a kind of a passion project also. It's six people living there. And um, what happens is that these villages, these very remote villages, are suffering a big abandonment by the population because the jobs are not there. And when you're talking about specifically the eucalyptus production, like Dr. Jorge Paiva says, a very famous botanist in Portugal, very amazing man, he says, uh, so. Uh, when we change to eucalyptus, we lose some things that we had before with pine and we had before with the, the oaks and everything that is a secondary use. But with eucalyptus, he says, the people are not going to cross their arms and stand there for 10 years watching a tree grow. So usually you just put it on the soil and then you go to the city, do other things, get other forms of money. And then when it's big, you come cut, repeat the cycle. So. This is a, a cause of a lot of abandonment in these small villages and especially by, by young people. And, and of course, we're missing a lot of things here. We're missing the cultural life that calls for young people, the, the community living. I think uh, for Eco Valley Feridoro, the, the point is really to make a community and a community that will also um, make events and, and trails and yeah, and we'll have available the vegetable garden that anyone that wants to come and eat can go there and harvest, can work in the garden too, can meet other people who think alike and bring really life to some, some place that is being left behind and just really concentrate. Okay, no, there's good people here, there's good things here and uh, we can make, it, can make it really alive. So the point of people being in Eco Valley Feridoro and living there is that uh, they can also be closer to, to nature and uh, really love it and really care for it every day because it's their home. Restoration starts with tree, but ends with people. People choosing to live differently and learning again how to care for what is fragile. You don't need to be an expert, you just need to begin. <laughs>